Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Happy Catty Crypto here. So it's that day of the week again. We're there. It's finally the weekend and it's not exactly been the greatest week, has it? And people are kind of not floundering, but they're getting worried. People are worrying about what they've got themselves involved in, what they've bought into and stuff like that. There's one thing I want to clarify here. Regardless of what happens, regardless of, you know, the that people not being as interested as they are, I'll still keep bringing you solid content. I'll still keep providing it regardless of my stance. Lunk is our home and it's where we hang our hats and it's ever so important to me. So is the community and becoming a validator was just another step towards doing something better for the community. But what I think is a big kind of broader issue and I was in a Twitter space uh, with LunkDAO and c uh, last night and I see it as a huge underlining issue and considering we're now going to be accepting funding pretty much in a sense coming from you know old members of what was Luna before the crash it it kind of raises the situation as to which you know we can't keep sitting there and like turning our backs on Luna and Luna speaking Luna V2, right? And the reason being, for starters, okay, it's in the Terror Rebels roadmap, okay, to upgrade the chain to, par to parity with Luna V2, making them interoperable, okay? Kind of like how IBCs work. Now, we're going to get onto a flow chart, and do I love flow charts at the moment? I think it's a really good way to kind of break things down and, and get people to kind of understand things a little bit more simplified and not as kind of overwhelming for your brain but I want everybody to know that it's part of the plan and it's part of Terra Rebels official roadmap on their official website that we are going to be interoperable with them meaning that we will even be a system that should in theory be better but what Terra Rebels also need to understand is is that Luna V2 is built up from a very very well formed community and a lot of them have survived the crash uh, they and we'll get onto this in a second Actually, I'll flick over to it now. And these people are pretty much, you know, they survived the crash. I had no choice but to receive a Luna airdrop. And then they got to keep the Luna Classic. And then it was up to them what they did. And, you know, they're, they're pretty much stuck with what they've got. And remember, these people only got paid out a certain percentage. And these are the people that actually genuinely got hurt. And hurting, like, Luna with this kind of negative attitude, even though we're willing to accept $4.16 um, million in off-chain assets, which is key to the survival of our blockchain. And that's very obvious right now with everything that's going on. So I've got this flow chart, and as you can see at the, at the top here, we've got Luna before the crash. The crash happens and it splits into two coins, okay? Those two coins then create two different blockchains, Columbus 5 and Phoenix 1. But the systems are near identical, okay? Exactly the same system. If you go over to Luna and use their system, it's just the same as ours. Everything is exactly the same. Even the tutorial guides have remained the same because the systems are still the same. So it makes sense for us, especially on a level of accepting that amount of money where we're then going to be responsible for the people who take on that role of multi-signature signers if that all goes through, right? We then become legally responsible for them. So it's at this point, then we need to start thinking, right, we really do need to start teaming up with this blockchain, which is made up of all of the old people who really understand, like you can call them the old guard if you like, because they're really wise, they're well-formed and well-educated. And we are well-educated here over at the Luna Classic blockchain. As much as people kind of like to see it as this kind of meme status kind of thing, I always like to see us as a well-educated bunch and we're still learning. Okay, everything's a learning cur curve for us because we're new to this environment. We're new to decentralization. We're figuring it out and we're understanding the situation behind, behind things. But we need to make it, you know, crystal clear that Luna V2 is the original community. Okay, and even with them being guided by Terra Labs, we are also in a sense guided by Terra Labs because we get all of our merges done by them. We get our pull requests. And so, you know, you've been through the process with us all. So we can't keep going through this whole turning our backs on all these different kind of projects that really have tried to get involved. I think Lunatics Tokens, one of those ones where it's kind of like they've been here long enough to show that they're not going anywhere, even during tough times. And, you know, they can do a lot of good for the blockchain if they actually do well off their own coin. And it's the same for the Xventi 
uh, way that they're burning is the better their coin does, the more that they're going to burn. It's it's as simple as that. It's all based off of their own you know volume. But we've got that coming into Q1 of 2023, which is really close now. We're very, very close to coming into you know, the next new year and looking forward to all of this stuff. But we are going to need funding. And this funding looks like it's coming from here. And if it is, you know, coming from Du Quan, as they're saying, he's kind of guiding the situation and things like that. You know, maybe this is him saying, you know, here, some funding, you know, get things going, figure yourselves out and get all your devs funded to ensure that they can stay. Because maybe it's in his best interest for our blockchain to do well, because we always know and we've always seen the coins kind of moving in sync over time. We've kind of followed a similar path. And at one point it was like a symbiotic relationship. I'll never, ever forget, you know, them times when it was literally like you could flick between the three and it was an identical pattern, but we're coming out of that now. And that's why you should always ensure you're doing your utmost best to make the most of your USTC and don't just sell it because you got it in rewards, but wait for a good opportunity. Okay. Wait for it to run up, you know, think carefully about what you're doing and do remember to take profits, you know, anything that runs up. And I always say this to people, it has to come back down for a correction. It can't keep running forever. It's just the way that these cycles kind of work. And it's best to understand the cycle of the system. So let's go over to the roadmap. We'll have a have another little look because we've got assess the burn tax coming up in um, the next month or two months. The next upgrade to the Tendermint is absolutely huge. The Cosmwasm is pretty much the smart contract system and how, how it communicates. It's kind of like the language. So that in itself is huge. And the end goal of this roadmap is to get to a point of where they can do a mechanism to increase decentralization of network validators. And I think this is awesome because we have such a huge issue with the centralization of voting power across the board at the moment. It's just centralized with those top validators that are really holding on to it. And the reason being is because they've been there set in stone. A lot of people will just not you know, be interested in changing. A lot of them might still think they're doing a 0% commission rate and they may not know they put it up to 5%. But we do still have an issue with 0% commission rates and it kind of does mess it up for all these other different little validators that are trying to become profitable so they can keep running and keep securing the blockchain for the community in hand. Because when everybody is kind of in this phase in their head where they're unsure of themselves, think about all these validators that, like myself, we've committed to the blockchain we're paying for the uptime we're doing all of the necessary things in a market that's not profitable like in a sense and then you know a lot of these validators are actually burning 50 percent, which is absolutely amazing because i wanted to do that way 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 back at the beginning and to be here now and to see how many other nodes want to burn it's amazing but they do need to become profitable for them to be able to burn otherwise they just end up not becoming profitable, they have to shut down the nodes. And what we need to aim for is drawing in new developers. This dev pool could be one of those routes. And I'm getting really good feedback on the dev pool. I'm getting a lot of people saying to put a proposal up. I really think I should. Um, I'm going to speak to a couple of people and I'm going to possibly put it forward um, inside Terra Rebels and say maybe this is the, the route of the least friction and the, the devs still get their funding and it all still remains decentralized so in a fact the devs win the community wins validators win and everything stays how it should stay on in that decentralized manner because if they're going to say increase decentralization of the network of validators then it, it you know it kind of raises questions doesn't it can we call ourselves decentralized after we give away this kind of small amount of freedom for a very streamlined system. And I honestly believe it would be a very streamlined system built on mutual trust trust and respect as it states in that proposal. And, you know, I, people just aren't at that stage. You know, we're kind of at that first date kind of stage. We're still kind of nervous. We're not, we're not quite sure if we want to come home for a coffee yet. And we're still kind of sussing out if we want to be in this relationship or not. And I think that's how people kind of feel. And I think it's a good way to analyze it and kind of paint a picture uh, in your heads for you but we've got a twitter space going on uh, this evening at 7 p.m if you've got a project you've got a utility you just want to come in and chat head on in come for a chat like i said hcc is going to be here regardless i'm not one of these people trying to push some kind of things on you and stuff like that it's just a chilled out nice little kind of thing and 
stuff like that. I hope you guys are utilizing all of the different kind of tools we've uh, provided you. We are working on different things. We are working on the NFT project. Just bear with us. We are, you know, there's so much to take in at so many times. Everything's running sweet with the node. Everything's absolutely amazing. I can't thank all you guys enough for uh, delegating with us and stuff like that. Hopefully the system's going to update soon. I'm really confused as to why it's still not showing the photos or anything like that. Do remember the only way to have a say sway in our governance votes is to be in our telegram group find the pinned poll in the twitter and uh, in the twitter go find the pinned poll in the telegram group that is a mouthful isn't it and um yeah have a little vote and then literally the last day before the proposals to end we will then draw the vote and then we'll put our vote in accordingly so guys do stay safe out there you can see the happy catty crypto thing here that's awesome isn't it yeah, I like uh, the fact that on the Terra Veloper, uh wallet side, it allows obviously a, um, emojis and, you know, you can't have that. It would be cool, wouldn't it, if they actually, you know, when you created your account, instead of being limited to just lowercase, if you could have emojis and stuff like that. But I guess it's kind of weird for the system. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All of this stuff's public, by the way, folks. All of the, the stuff with validators, everything's public. You can see our commission and you can just see all the ins and outs and everything just by clicking on the operator address and the wallet address. And like I said, 50% burn once a month, every month until we get up to a level of where LunkDAO is and then we'll be burning weekly. And it's, it's just so simple. The more people that delegate with us, the more we're actually able to burn. And... You know, it's kind of the community will always have the say and sway with our validators node. You just need to be in a Telegram group and, you know, it's as simple as that. So do stay safe out there. Like I said, we've got our Twitter space this evening. Feel free to head over. We've got our live stream at midday today on YouTube. Don't forget to um, check in there if you feel like it. It's only for an hour. Same thing every Friday. And just stay safe out there. Beware of scammers. We've opened a NFT sales group, uh, Telegram group. Just head over to our Telegram and it's pinned in the description. Feel free if you want to, you know, trade NFTs and all that kind of stuff in there. Do understand there's a disclaimer written at the top. This group was made because people inside the Telegram group wanted a place to kind of trade things. I can act as a middleman where I take the coins from one party, take the NFT from another party and then send them both ways for ease of safety. But do your own research. I'm not responsible for any trades that happen in there unless they go through my own you know, palms, so to speak, and just stay safe, okay? Beware of scammers. Don't give your monomics out to anyone. Don't, you know, trust anyone off of your own hair. Ask questions, do your own research, do your own due diligence, and all those kind of things. <clears throat> My throat's going, Jesus. And um, just stay safe. We can't emphasize that enough here at HCC. Don't respond to any of these WhatsApp numbers that post up. I do try and catch them. It's so, ah, they're like weeds, honestly. And I just, Catch you in the next one. Shoo.